welcome everybody to another round of World of Tanks subscriber replays. My name, as always, is Maxwell, and today's first video is from the user Lewis Sherman 13. That's Lewis Sherman 13, and he's driving the 59-16 on a standard battle on Ruinberg on fire, also known as slightly rainy Ruinberg. So being a light tank in a tier 8 game, especially a tier 6 light tank, and you can imagine he's not going to have the most stellar of damaging games but he is still going to be able to affect the turn of play. Now I played this thing on the PTR but never really bothered with the Chinese light tanks uh, just because this tank was such a pain in the ass to play and because uh, it's just because of the cannon really it's got really really terrible penetration but it does have a pretty nice auto loader as you can see there's only 1.3 seconds between shots and it fires five shots in total with only an eight second reload between them but if we take a quick look at the stats you can see only got 85 penetration and 115 standard damage so this thing, especially when up against higher and heavily armoured tanks, higher tiered and more heavily armoured tanks, you're going to have to shoot the side armour, and even then you can see not really a chance of penetrating. Decides to switch across to the 30 or 2 instead, because he's got weaker armour. Takes out his tracks, going to be careful here, but as you can see, the 30 or 2 overshoots him with his gun. So clearly, Lewis hasn't been spotted out here, and the 30 or 2 has no idea where the shots are coming from. But as normal with the Chinese guns, you can see the accuracy of them are not fantastic. And uh, although it's got 1.3 seconds between shots, the aiming time is quite considerable. So you cannot expect your gun to be fully aimed after those 1.3 seconds. You're really going to have to wait more like 2, 2.5 seconds for long-range shots like that. So there we go, the AMX 1375 and the VK 3002 both taken out. Lewis can switch his attention back to the centre here. The enemy team pushing through with a few medium tanks, but as you can see, the allied team got a good contingent of tank destroyers here, a heavy tank and other tank destroyer on Lewis's right-hand side, and he's going to be focusing on this 34-3 as he makes a cut across the road there. Does manage to survive. So Lewis is going to come around behind him and try and get some shots on him. Unfortunately, only had two standard shells left. So was only able to land two shots on the rear of the 34-3 there. As you can see, having to switch it up to premium rounds now just because of the terrible, terrible penetration of this gun. You can see having a little bit better luck getting some penetrating shots there. But you can see a super pushing flanking around the uh, buildings here and from the sides or the front he's got absolutely no chance of hurting a Super Pershing luckily he has got the rear armour and sets him on fire with his first shot Super Pershing figures out where the fire extinguisher is that's normally my trick Lewis is able to take him down to 16 hit points and he gets almost 800 hit points from that Super Pershing there an excellent excellent piece of play and now he's got to switch his attention back to the centre because with that push from the 34 Dash uh, 3 there. Most of the Allied tanks have fallen now. Going to be coming up against the weakly armoured T-71 here. Hiding in the back. He's looking in the wrong direction. May actually be reloading. Set him on fire and he's able to make his escape. Doesn't look like he takes out that T-71. I think he may have fully burned. But not too sure about that one. His cannon will be reloaded now. So he's going to come around. Finally able to get another shot on him. Didn't quite pick up the kill. But he's taken some fire from the side there. From that Cheeto by the looks of it. Got to be careful because he doesn't have the armour or the hit points to be able to soak up very much of that damage at all. But it was a lovely piece of play there to take out that T-71 and just get back into cover. It's just himself and an allied T-71 on this flank now. And he's going to be making his way all the way down the side. There was a shell landing close by there. Not sure if that was from the artillery or maybe that Hellcat. If the Hellcat's still in position because that was quite a large calibre shell. So he knows that he was spotted out earlier but he's probably faded back into the fog of war now. As that Cheeto's not returning fire. Cheeto thinks he's in cover, but he's not particularly safe. Might be able to get some shots on him now, but he just fades away. So a little bit unfortunate there. Could have really wrecked that Cheeto. See the T-71 coming to offer some aid now. Going to wait for him to get a little bit closer. Then the two of them going to try and get in behind the enemy, the enemy spawn location. And maybe go for some artillery hunting. You can see the artillery is Tier 8 here. So Tier 6 tank scoring damage on Tier 8 tanks is going to yield some fantastic experience and credit. So if they're able to find and take out this artillery, it's going to be really, really good for their stats. Gets a good shot on the Cromwell there to take him out. And switch his attention up to this Cheeto now. He knows he's got a good few seconds between the Cheeto's reloads, but he is taking the... A considerable amount of damage. He's only got 65 hit points left, so he's going to have to play carefully now. 
Now we can see why that T71 was also playing at rather cagey. He's only got 15 hit points. So the two of them are going to try and double team down this Cheeto, but it's going to have to be... They're going to have to be very careful about it because the Cheeto's got more than enough firepower to take both of these guys out. And with the quick reload speed that he has as well, he could make short work of both of them. T71's left himself out in the open quite dangerously there. And there we go. The Sky Artillery takes out the Cheeto there. Fantastic click from the M4043 to eliminate him. And now the T71 and the 5916 in the hands of Lewis are going to be able to hunt down the artillery because they are the only guys left now. And they are there. We go spot out the GW Tiger P. Going to have to try and get in close because he is behind the building. The M4043 is also in cover. So going to have to get reasonably close. Lands a uh, one good shot. Looks like the M4043 is focusing down. I don't think he realises how dangerous the situation is, though. He's able just to take him out no problem whatsoever. He's got one shell in the chamber. Doesn't really want to reload, but the GW Tiger P's only got one hit point. Can he finish him off? Yes, he can. That's four kills and almost three and a half thousand points of damage for a 59-16 tier 6 light tank in a tier 8 game. That is a fantastic score. So absolutely awesome replay there from Lewis Sherman 13 Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget to stick around because as always the score screens and another game are coming right up. And our second replay of the day is from the user Arabica. That is Arabica, and he's driving the Lorraine 40 ton on a standard battle on Severogorsk. Lorraine 40 ton being a tier 9 medium tank for the French. This one gets a little bit of stick for not being a very good medium tank. Has the same gun that the. Uh, AMX 5100 has same penetration and alpha damage, although it has a 10 second faster reload. So one of the punishing things about the AMX 5100 is the length of the reload. So it does a job of lowering that, although it is still made out of paper like most of the French high tier tanks. So really this thing doesn't trade fantastically well, but it does get a pretty good cannon even at tier 9. Uh... So we're going to see what it can do in the hands of a skilled driver. Arabica going to be taken to the centre of the map because screw the right hand flank and screw the left hand flank. He's going to sit here and see if he can get some damage on people trying to make their way through the centre. Spots out a Super Pershing here. I know for a fact that this gun is finds it difficult to penetrate Super Pershing. Gets a lovely shot through his lower plate there and gets a very nice high roll. Unfortunately, that shot just takes out his tracks. That one bounces. That one misses. And decides just to fall back and reload his cannon. Rather than attempting to trade with the Super Pershing some more. Because the spaced armor on that thing can be quite ridiculous. So he's just going to get himself into cover for the next 30 odd seconds and just reload that cannon of his. Just got to make sure that he's not going to get seen from behind here. And uh, when that cannon gets nearly reloaded, going to try and hunt for another target. Aiming time on the gun isn't great. Sixth Sense goes off there, so he knows he's been spotted by somebody. Not really sure who. There we go. Takes a shot in the rear there. Probably thought he was quite safe thanks to the E75 being behind him covering that flank, but apparently not fantastically safe. E75 being a little bit of a slacker. T43 pops out. Not sure why, because he knows the Lorraine is here. But uh, T43 decides for some reason that he's going to remain out just long enough for the Lorraine to get another hit on him. So I'm not really sure what was going through his mind there, but he decides to drop back now. Maybe going to play a little bit of peekaboo, try and lure the Lorraine into firing. Maybe the T43 doesn't realise that he's got an auto loader. Even if he does fire, he's going to have some more shots to back that one up. 
Seeing the MX-5100 coming in now. Did smell the blood in the water with his T-43. And he's just going to try and pound him down and take him out. Although he takes a considerable amount of damage. You can see him backing off now. I don't know if that's in an effort to try and draw the T-43 out. Or whether he's just scared and wants to try and get away. Any way that it works out. Arabica gets a shot through the sidearm of the T-43. Takes him out and picks up kill number one now. Trying to see who, where the uh, Super Pershing has gone. Does spot him out behind a house over there. He is well entrenched, so that's not really going to be able to push him down whatsoever. So just going to drop back a little bit. Reload that cannon again. You see a T-44 making a push as well. So Arabica decides just to drop back a little bit further. Just in case that T-44 decides to try and bum rush him. And uh, with a cannon that still had 20 seconds on reload, that T-44 would have been able to do severe work. He's done well so far, not losing very many hit points. He's only lost uh, a few hundred. Still got 1,280 to go. One thing you want to do with these auto loaders with low armor is just try and keep as many hit points as you can for as long as possible. And then late on in the game, you can then just start trading hit points with people. They might do two or 300 damage to you, but you can probably get off six to 800 damage on them. But obviously if you get to late game without the hit points, not able to do that. But then you still can play Assassin. Super Pershing almost certainly spotted him out here. Unfortunately missed his shot, but Arabica was only able to get a critical hit back onto him. Just going to wait for the Super Pershing to pop back out again. Trying to focus on his low play. Did manage to get some damage onto him though. But the Super Pershing's playing it very cagey and very smart here. Uh, only popping out when he has the damage to do. And that just negates the auto-loader of the Lorraine here. Did manage to get a hit onto him. The uh, Super Pershing onto the Lorraine, that is. But the shot just bounced, which is very unusual for the thickness of this armor. Does spot out an AMX here. Does take a shot in the rear. Got one hit back on the AMX. But again, the AMX also playing at KG. Just firing when his gun's loaded and then hiding back behind the building. Arabica deciding that he's had enough of trading shots in the town there. Going to try and push down on this AMX. Let down a little bit by his gun depression. Gets one good hit. Takes another in return from the AMX. But he's not able to get in cover. Arabica takes him out and picks up kill number two. So he's not been trading pr very well at all so far. Taking unnecessary shots from that AMX. But this is moving on to the mid game now. Which is where these auto loaders tend to shine. Everybody's been worked down a little bit. Lost a little bit of hit points. And then with six shells in the canister. You're able just to start eliminating people. And taking them out. You can see Arabica just hanging around here. He knows that Super Pershing won't have ventured very far from his hiding spot. And really going one on one against Super Pershing at the moment. Front on. Arabica's probably going to lose that trade. If he's not able to pen every single shot. Because he's only two shots from death himself. Does see that the fight is not going particularly well. On the right hand flank for the allies here. See the Leopard PT and that M103 squaring off against an IS-3. So Arabic is going to try and get around behind them. Get some shots on the rear and try and take these guys out. Does spot the Leopard PT here. It's a great shot on him. Gets a little bit of damage back in return. Just one more good shot. Should be enough to take him out. It does indeed. And that's kill number three. Still got three shots in the chamber. M103 is still up this hill somewhere. But you can see he's dropped back as well. And Arabica gets a great snapshot on him as he's trying to get back into cover. And picks up kill number four. But unfortunately Arabica just started to reload his cannon. When he still had two shots in the chamber. And the artillery gets spotted out here. So he's going to have to wait an age. It's going to feel like an absolute eternity waiting this 30 seconds to be able to get a shot on the artillery. He was obviously spotted out here because the Leopard PTA pretty much drove smack into him. So the artillery is going to know that he is here. Not sure if the artillery has six cents, but this IS-3 is going to go and try and close him down anyway, although it looks like he takes cover. Probably going to be able to take out the artillery himself. Arabica is almost loaded. Can he secure the last 48 hit points? First one misses. Can he make the second one count? Mm, yes, he can. Just as he fades into the fog of war, he lands that shot with just a little tiny bit of the top of the artillery visible. Now it is time to head back to the base and play base defense as they have squarely lost the fight on the right hand flank as well. Super Pershing T44 and the T28 prototype going to be making inroads towards the allied base here. Arabica electing not to reload that cannon. Still got four shots in the chamber. And if we take a look at the hit points of the guys that are left, they aren't looking particularly healthy. T28 prototype, Black Prince, and the Tiger 2 potentially one shots. Uh, although the Tiger 2 is dead already, so I don't know why that's still in the list. 
One good shot on the side of the Super Pershing takes him out, and that is kill number six at a Top Gun medal. T-44 still on 100% hit points, though, manages to get his tracks. Hopefully, the artillery can make something out of that as well, and you can see the accuracy of this gun is not fantastic. What a shot! Takes out the T-44 with an ammo rack for 965 points of damage. That is a 100-0 to zero work there. Landed one shot to take out his tracks, another damaging shot, and then gets a 965 hit point ammo rack to take the guy out, which is just the absolute stroke of luck that he needed at that point. He didn't have the damage to be able to eliminate him straight away. He would have had to wait for that, uh, that auto load or reload. But as it is now, the enemy team only got this T28 prototype left, last spotted on the right-hand side of the map, the IS-3. Hanging around the base of the ally of the enemy team. Arabica rushes his shot there because he's not sure how long the T28 prototype is going to remain visible for. But it looks like he's hanging around, which is his last mistake. He gets taken out. That's kill number eight and four and a half thousand points of damage. So absolutely awesome replay there from Arabica showing his skill in the Lorraine 40 ton. And how well he can do with that with a little bit of luck and favourable positioning. So awesome replay from you. Thank you very much for sending that one in. Don't forget, guys, if you've got yourself a great replay, please send that into replay at screenreality.com. Link for that is in the description. Just send me the replay file attached to the email or send me a link to the What Replay website where I can find that, and I'll definitely take a look at it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, found it useful, informative, you enjoyed it or you learned something, then consider hitting that subscribe button because there's a lot more World of Tanks content on this channel. I've been Maxwell, this has been World of Tanks, and I will catch you guys next time.